This is my life. It has been a nice life. I would not have traded it for anything. Prior to my arrival, much groundwork had been laid. Permit me to introduce to you several of my relatives. This is my great-grandmother, Mary Jane Williams Braden, born in Belfast, Ireland, and my grandparents, the William Bradens, my father's family, with my grandmother Brayton seated and my father at the extreme left of his brothers and sisters. My grandma Maul, the only grandparents I ever knew, with her mother, or with my mother, shown the second from the left. This handsome man is my father and my mother, taken about the time of their marriage. Dad was 29 years old and Mom was 15. Going to the parlor when we were kids was about like going to the temple. Once there, no horseplay. The picture at the upper center was taken in the late 1800s of my father, mother, Sam, and Rosella. We are proud to be to have this picture in our home today. This is the house in which I was born and lived until I went away to college. Our family about one year before I was born. I believe this to be, to have been the last family picture. The only such picture, the next such picture was taken about 26 years later with my mother having already passed away. Note. My birth certificate has no first name. So who am I? Fortunately, my sister Irene certified that I had been born and that my name is Norman. My sister and Gladys enjoying my company. All seven brothers with me in the center. My first set of wheels. On the way to church, me out front, me laying on the board waiting for a handout while my sisters entertain their friends in the playhouse. District 68, on large enrollment was 12 students and eight grades. Note it was not only filled with Braytons, but run by the Braytons, my dad and brother, and later to be taught by my sister and sister-in-law. My first grade teacher was Winifred Holchek, who also boarded at our house. Nine students, eight grades, and my sister Irene, the teacher. Note, I am the tallest one. With my sister-in-law and my sister as the teachers, my grades were not too bad. Note to the extreme light, right, I got a straight B in cleanliness. For punctual and regular attendance, we received awards. Following in my brother Lauren's footsteps, I took to growing corn as a 4-H project. Our weekends were generally a lot of fun. Here I was getting ready for a jaunt on my brother's Indian motorcycle. On Sunday afternoons, the Brayton's farm was a gathering place for friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, and families, the social event of the week. Dad and Mom on a cold, wintry Sunday afternoon. The Congregational Church in Barnesville was, without doubt, the most influential institution in my life. And the Reverend and Mrs. Andrews were my second parents. When it was cold and the snow was deep, they suggested that I give up riding my bicycle the eight miles to and from school and live with them in the parsonage. They did this for me for two winters. Can you believe that I too played in the band? My forgiving mother signed this. Some people thought that because I went to college I was smart. This slide proves that my enthusiasm compensated for my mental deficiency. Taken from my senior class yearbook. Though he is small, no one can trample on him. One must learn when young to compensate for his deficiencies. One of the greatest honors in anyone's life is when his eighth grade teacher asks you to be the best man at her wedding. Our home was beautiful, always well cared for, 
and lots of lots of happy people. The first Sunday night we met, five years later we were married. A favorite college lunch break on the shores of the Mississippi River with two very close friends. One of many holiday trips to Barnesville. This is just one of 11 flats we had on this trip. My friends and neighbors selected me to serve for one year in the Armed Forces, draft day 1941. Five years later, I was discharged. Basic training. Just another furrow, not yet married. Christmas 1942 at Camp Chaffee, Arkansas. She's still chasing me. Finally, she caught me in June of 1943, taken at the base chapel in Camp Chaffee. 1705 B Street, Fort Smith, Arkansas, our first temporary home. It was still there when we returned 42 years later. On maneuvers in Leesville, Louisiana, we snuck our brides along. Barb and I had the upper right room. My Captain Augustine and his bride had the lower left right room. Our friends the Lewises in Taunton, England, we were building in their home prior to the invasion. They are still friends of the family. In Metz, France, the 889th Ordnance Officers. My cousin, Mr. Nolte, at his home in Versailles, France. While in Europe, my dad and mom celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Without a doubt, this was the saddest news I have ever received and perhaps the saddest day of my life. Mother's death expected momentarily. Bird, Germany. The war is over. We are being prepared for shipment to the South Pacific. We are staying in the Anglo-American Hotel in Fontainebleau, France, complete with French chefs and French waitresses. Five years after my friends and neighbors had drafted me, I was discharged. This is my father's will. It says, Thorold will have the privilege of renting the farm as long as he desires to do so. Number two, Thorold is to get the horses, all the cows and machinery as full payment of back wages. Number three, Thorold will rent the farm on a 50-50 basis and I will furnish the seed. The household <coughs> goods are to remain uh, with the house on the farm. The farm will be deeded over to Norman and DeLoss on their return from the Army with the understanding that I still get the landlord's share, <coughs> uh, furnish the seed, and pay the taxes as long as I live. To Sam, Gladys, Alfred, Walter, Catherine, Marguerite, Irene, Lauren, Edna, and Thorold, I will pay $100 each, beginning with the oldest and on down, one each year as long as I am here. And if I cannot get them all paid, it is understood that Norman and DeLaws will pay the balance. Rosella figures she has been paid. This is the closest that our entire family came to being together, missing his mother. Finally, in June 1946, I graduated from St. Cloud State College. Our family has started. My first civilian teaching job was in the Sock Rapids Public School System, where I organized the driver training program, the second in the state of Minnesota. Carolyn and Ruth at a happy age. I task a state park. The one on the right is Barb dressed in her camping clothes. Brownies and the whole bit. A family training session in social development and etiquette. On each of the girls' birthdays, for many years, we would dine at a nice restaurant. 
camping in Estes Park, Colorado. At an early age, I learned that in order to eat at the head table, I had to be an officer in some organization. Note Barb's enthusiasm. The university at which I taught for 30 years provided many opportunities for travel. Here I'm dining in the house of a friend in Tokyo. From here I went on to Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok, India, where I spent the summer, and then on to Europe where I met Carolyn and Barb before returning to Madison. Foundry and Welding Technology was the title of the six weeks course which I helped to teach while in India. The monsoons failed this year. The farmers were plowing and preparing to try again. Another opportunity which the university offered was that of using one's ingenuity. One of my ideas was to freeze ob objects to change their properties. In this case, to freeze the automobile tire and to shatter them. This tire recycler was developed at the University of Wisconsin. Welding has always been my specialty. This shows one of my one of the many institutes at which I participated. An exciting city in which to be invited to present a paper is Las Vegas. Here I am in here I am in the Caesar's Palace telling about cryogenics. Another exciting city is Columbus's birthplace, Genoa, Italy. Perhaps the most covenant award which I received was this from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers for my work in cryogenics. Following the 30-year cultural revolution in China, we began to get large numbers of Chinese scholars. One of my Chinese scholars' name was Li. Here I am dining at Professor Lee's house with his family in Ganzhou, China. Upon retirement, I gave my library of about 500 engineering books to the University of South China in Ganzhou. This is where my books are housed. In appreciation for my donation of the books, President Lo gave me a private dinner and presented me with this wood carving. My office on the Madison campus. One week the Milwaukee Journal gave several page spread on my work in cryogenics and the recycling of tires. One of my five patents in the area of cryogenic recycling. This particular patent is on the removal of paint from paint carrying hooks being used today by General Motors. The National Geographic Society thought my work in cryogenics to be interesting enough to give it some publicity. After 30 years at the University of Wisconsin, having re reached the magic age of 65, my colleagues and friends put on this party. <clears throat> Being presented with my favorite toy, a welder. Years, after, years ago, the Triangle Fraternity voted me an associate member. Here, they recognize my retirement. They say several nice things. One of two books which I authored, the other being in Wilding. At retirement age, the fire and all. This speaks for itself. I find that I am not the only Brayton. This is our family. In November of 1985, five grandchildren and two son-in-laws. I am now in the fourth quarter of my life. What the immediate future holds for me, I do not know. What the last whole day holds for me, I am quite certain. Barb and I have selected this beautiful little cemetery in Prairie View Township as our final resting place. The end of an exciting journey.